So I've discovered a small bug in what seems like the Everdraft cartridges playing Master System games uh, with modern screens more than original. So if we just take a look at this, you can see an actual original SMS game, uh, Sega Master System game loads perfectly fine and plays. And if we take a look at, say, a normal Sonic game, you can see they also play perfectly fine. The issue comes with the EverDrive. So this is the very latest EverDrive on the very latest firmware up to date. And when we load into a Master System game, you can see we get this issue. Now, this issue is specific to the Master System ones, not the Game Gear ones, and I'll explain why. So if we just take apart the console like this so we can actually probe in when it's running. And if we connect the EverDrive and then turn the console back on, we'll see in this menu, and it looks fine and normal as it is, if we were to probe the SMS pin, you can see that it's 3.3 volts, and that should be 5 volts. So by default, if we turn the console off, remove an EverDrive, and let's just explain what's going on here. We turn the console on without anything in and measure the SMS pin. You can see it's pulled to close to five volts. Now this is thanks to this little pull-up resistor here, R12 on a two chip. Uh, in this case, I'm using a SYF board, so it's got its own pull-up resistor, but it's the same thing. It's basically a pull-up resistor. And the A6 on the Game Gear are expecting five volts. It's a five volt logic system. If we look at the cartridge connector pin, you can see it's pin one, two, three, four. So we know it's the fourth pin over. So we know it's the fourth pin over on the right on the cartridge connector. If you were using an original one, it would be four pins over here. So long, short, long, short. So the issue we have is this should be five volts with an EverDrive. And that works simply because Master System games do nothing to that pin. And Game Gear games short out the fourth pin so one two three four you can see the fourth pin here goes around through this jumper back down and shorts to ground so if we looked here you can see the fourth pin is sms the fifth pin is ground and on the game gear cartridge one two three four so the sms pin here loops around goes down to the fifth pin which is ground so game gear games short the sms pin to ground and sega master system games simply leave it floating so if we were to see if i can fit this in here just about. We turn that on and measure with a real Master System game. You can see it floats to the natural voltage. It's doing nothing to the line. So this is causing, in the case of this clean screen, for the SMS pin to constantly toggle high and low, high and low, and go between Master System and Game Gear, causing the screen glitch. So just to confirm, I'm making a presumption at the moment it's the EverDrive, but we have a math board. So I tested this against an original board and it does exactly the same, so it's not this board. But we also have a brand new clean screen. So this is the clean screen too, with new buttons, new FPGA, new code. So we're not sure yet whether this fully works. In a sense, this could be interfering. So to prove that, let's just disconnect the clean screen altogether. So that's it now, it's not interfering at all with um, the Game Gear. So let's just get into a Master System game see the issue and now while it's running let's just disconnect the clean screen altogether so it can't interfere with the sms pin so now the only thing touching the sms pin is the console itself and the uh, everdrive so you can see that it's now 3.3 volts still so the issue is definitely the everdrive the goal here is it should be left floating not driven to 3.3 volts because that's in the middle of the two values and I'm guessing at the minute the FPGA on the EverDrive is directly driving that pin and not leaving it floating in an open drain configuration. So I've not actually checked this yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fix this fairly easily. Just take out the SD card, pop the front off, and let's just take a look at the EverDrive. So we can see here, we want the fourth pin, so one, two, three, four. You can see this fourth pin runs a trace up here, 
to 100 ohm resistor. And this trace seems to go through a via here. There's two vias and it's the bottom one. Flip over and you can see it's that trace there. Goes along, down, up to a via here, which appears to run under this chip here. So with the multimeter, let's just go into continuity mode. That's probably the quickest way of finding this out. Go on the fourth pin. Uh, we know that goes to there, we've seen. So we'll go to the top of the resistor now, and let's try and find out where it goes after that point. Right, so it appears to go to this pin on the FPGA, the one just in line with the capacitor. So that means this FPGA is directly driving um, and it's an ICE40, the same as what we use on the clean screen, funnily enough. So nice high quality FPGA there. We could check the specs on this, but it clearly is going from here, driving this and directly driving 3.3 volt onto the Game Gear pin. The slight concern as well is 5 volts has technically passed back up here through this resistor and into the FPGA. That's not the best thing to do for this chip. It might eventually damage it. So what we want to do instead, it's a fairly easy fix. Uh, if we just say, take this resistor off, turn it to the side, and let's just confirm that we still get 3.3 volts and ground driven here. So we'd have to use a double N-channel MOSFET arrangement here in order to, when this is low, disable the first MOSFET, which is then pulled high, which enables the second MOSFET, which then pulls it low to keep the logic the same. Uh, we could use a level shift, we could use many other techniques. But I think the quickest one to just check this fix is to put two N-channel MOSFETs on uh, this driving line to toggle, you know, effectively keep the line where it is, but level shift up to five volts. So here is what we're thinking. We'll have to have two of these. We've got an N-channel MOSFET here of any kind is fine. One side to ground, which is what we want to pull the SMS pin to. And the other side will go to the SMS pin. We don't need this pull up here because the Game Gear itself does the pull up. So we just need one side to ground, one side to effectively the SMS pin, but we're going to have to invert that so it'll be a bit different. But let's presume there was just one for now. And then the resistor off the EverDrive will come into the gate and trigger. So when it goes high, it enables the MOSFET, which allows this output to be sunk to ground. Because we want to invert that, we just have to double stack it in essence. And we will need to pull this one up to 5 volts, otherwise it goes nowhere. It, you know, it will be floating. And then we put another transistor here. So let's just see if I can find a quick image of that. Okay, so I can't find one, so I've just quickly drawn one to show an example. So we have an N-channel MOSFET here with source to ground. And the drain we will pull up to the 5 volt pin of the cartridge connector. And then this will be the input from the EverDrive. So when this is high... It will enable this MOSFET, which pulls this gate low, which disables this MOSFET, which pulls this pin high. And this won't exist here because the Game Gear does this pull-up. And this will form the final output here going to the SMS pin. So if we were to wire what we're going to do and just label it slightly. And this voltage needs to be 5 volt off the cartridge connector. So we want the 5 volt pin here or the 5 volt pin here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pin 11 here, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sixth down on the bottom. So let's just mark this with a pen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 5 volts here. So we want 5 volts there. SMS we know is the fourth pin here. And then ground is the fifth pin here. Now you can see they've used ground over here, so we'll probably want to use this as ground just to be safe, uh, because this ground is technically looped through the Game Gear's cartridge connector, whereas this ground is three grounds in a row. So we will ignore that ground, even though it's technically a ground, and use this as ground, this as the SMS pin, and this as the 5 volt. So with that said, we need to construct a circuit like this. So I've got some generic uh, MOSFETs lying around here, just got some N-channel MOSFETs, any will do. The important thing is just pull up the data sheet and make sure you get the drain source and gate correct. So I'm just going to look up the uh, data sheet for this part. And we can see here there's the part. 
and we've got gate source and drain like this but the important thing is which is which so you can see on this diagram here you've got gate drain and source like that and if we look at this diagram what we need to start with doing is lifting the resistor here turning it on its side and passing the resistor into this pin here so we want it to go into the gate so that means on our transistor this pin wants to be soldered to the resistor on the everdrive first so let's do it step by step so the first thing i'm going to do is just hot air this resistor and turn it on its side so that's now forming our everdrive pin and this is the sms pin let's take out one of these transistors and we're going to need two so let's just get two out and we wanted to connect the gate of the first transistor to the resistor there. So we'll get one and solder one on like that. And we probably want to give it some room because we are gonna need a few resistors. But if we plan this out by lining it out first, let's see. That would go on that pin there. That would go on the edge of the resistor there. And then we will need just a pull-up resistor going to the five volt rail. So that's gonna need a resistor and a wire. That will be going off the center of this one. So we probably want this one pointing up like this, which is definitely what we want. So let's just do that first. I'm happy to commit to that bit. And tack that in place. Now we need a little pull-up resistor here, which is the drain, and then going down to here, which is the power in which they've also used over here, which will be this power in. So again, just because the Everdrive uses this five volt and not this, I'm gonna wipe that off. And we're gonna tap into this five volts here, which goes obviously up to here, goes right the way up to the board, goes to the top pin there, goes to presumably there, but we can test that with multimeter. But I'm just gonna play it safe and probably tack onto this bit here. So let's just double check that's right from up at the IC. Yep, and that pin there. So we can go onto that cap there for our five volt wire fairly easily. I'm just gonna use nice thin enamel wire to do this. I'm just gonna strip the wire by applying plenty of solder to my iron, poking the enamel wire in, and just leaving it in there for a second. And then we get a nice stripped end there. Clean the dry solder off the iron and tin the capacitor. We're gonna tack the wire on and go up and across just to avoid being close to the exposed. Well, we certainly don't wanna go past that line because this is exposed outside of the connector. Tack that there. Want to avoid that plastic hole. It's just plastic that pokes through, but we don't wanna go on that. And we'll just go through and around. And this is all enamel wire, so this isn't exposed um, wire. It's not conductive until you strip the varnish off the enamel. So this wire wants to be roughly there. And all this stuff is sold on retro6.co.uk if you want to buy the enamel wire, the soldering irons, the solder. I think we've even got the transistors on. Uh, all this is doable if you just jump on our site to buy the items. Just going to chuck on, say, uh, a 56K, just because I've got plenty of them. A little 56K resistor. So this is the pull-up resistor that we're doing now. So there's the little resistor. And what we're doing here is this pull-up resistor here. There's the wire attached to five volts. This is the pull-up resistor and the other side is going to the drain pin, which is this pin on the MOSFET. Like so, so that's now attached. Pre-tin the other side. And this looks like quite fine work, but it's not as hard as it looks. If you're working and you're not confident in such, you can blob a little bit of extra flux on, never harms. We just put, say, a tiny bit of flux in this area while we're working. It will keep the solder uh, flowing nicely. And tack onto the resistor. Then just take a cotton wool bud and clean up the flux that we have on so far. So now we have that, uh, what we're left with now is the source of this transistor 
And we mentioned already that the drain of the final transistor, the place that needs to be connected to the 5 volts, is the bottom pin here, the SMS. So let's just tack him in place. And we're going to have, again, if we just look at the diagram now, the drain goes straight to there, the source goes straight to ground, and the gate goes straight to the drain. So we can actually attach the gate and the drain together. So the drain here wants to attach to the gate here. So we could pin this on here and send a wire from here to there, or we could pin this up there and send a wire down. But based on space, I'm going to put this here. So it's nice and uh, gives us a bit of space for the wire. Let's move him out of the way a moment. Pre-tin this pad. And I wouldn't use anything except enamel wire here. Uh, do not use uh, the blue Kynar wire. This will potentially rip traces. Stick with 0.2 or even better, 0.1 enamel wire. And now we have the drain going to the SMS pin here and the drain there. So that's what we want. Uh, we can join together the sources because if we look at the uh, basic drawing, both sources want to be ground. So we can join both bottom right pins together which are here so we could in theory spin it around so that this pins on here and it saves one last wire or one extra wire rather and if we try and orient it so the two bottom left pins are together like that and that pins on there you can see right there we can form a nice little triangle and save ourselves a wire. If I line these two up correctly, nicely blob them together like that. So if we just take a look at what I'm doing here now, you can see we have the gate of the first transistor coming off the Everdrive's 3.3 volt rail. We have the drain being pulled up, going off to five volts. We have the source of this and the source of this connected, and we still need to join this bit to ground. We have the drain of the final transistor going to SMS. So the only thing left is the gate of the second transistor, which needs to link to this part. So we need a wire from here to here, and then we need this wire to go to ground. Pre-tin the pad of the transistor. Bend this wire around. And we want to connect this wire to the drain of this one. And then just blob that onto the drain of this transistor. And then just nudge the wire into a neat little curl. Let's see if we can clean that up a little bit. And the final step is to get a ground. So we've got a ground here, and we just need to link to the ground on the middle of these two MOSFETs. So let's just find a ground should be fairly simple. Uh, there'll be plenty of grounds around, especially on the caps close. So these are the three grounds that we know that are joined on the cartridge connector. And usually the caps near components are ground. So you can see that'll be a grounding point there. We could go all the way to the top here. And I'm sure one of these programming pins will be ground, which you can see here. So you could go to this pin if you wanted. That's five volts, that's ground. And then these are programming pins for the lattice. So considering I'm just fairly confident with the soldering, I'm just gonna go straight here, nice and close. And this will be the last wire for the mod and we're done. So this takes a little time because we've just literally designed this circuit uh, now, literally as we're going through this process, I've just come up with this presumable solution, just a level shifter. Um, a million ways we can tackle this and solve this, but for now, I've just done it this way, just two end channel MOSFETs for a non-inverting one-way level shifter in a sense. We're just sinking the uh, five volt rail down. This is also something I can share with Crix to potentially update the code, the firmware. So instead of doing a direct drive on the FPGA pin, there might be a way to configure it as an open drain so that it doesn't directly drive 3.3 volts. It simply does nothing or sinks to ground. 
in which case this mod won't be needed and it can be a software update, which is much easier. If not, you can probably perform this mod yourself. And finally, I hope if this is a solution um, that Crix will implement and just add this mini circuit to uh, the next revisions of the board. We do sell them on our store now, so we buy off them anyway. So I should be able to hopefully pass this information back if this works and get it implemented in the next revisions. So it's a tight little squeeze there, but we have the two end channel MOSFETs. We have the sources both connected to ground. We have uh, the first MOSFET here, the gate being driven by the EverDrive's 3.3 volts. The output then, the drain, is pulled high to 5 volts over here and then connected to the gate of the next transistor. So when the first transistor is high, the second transistor is low, and it keeps it from inverting. And finally, the output, the drain of uh, this transistor, is connected to the SMS pin, and the source obviously sinks it to ground. So if I've done that right, which I think I have, it's not a complicated circuit, we should be able to now put this together and have a working EverDrive. So let's just see if this does actually work. It all fits in. Let's just expose it again now we've connected it to just double check it's not crushing our wires, which it isn't. So we're happy that nothing's getting caught, nothing's getting crushed, and we're still good to go. And now the moment of truth, and fingers crossed, let's see if we've solved the problem. SD card not found. So, so far so good. Master system. And look at that, there's the fix. So that was good because I genuinely didn't know if this was going to work, this was just a quick circuit modification I thought up off the top of my head and it appears to now be working and to validate that um, let's just remove the game disconnect here connect the EverDrive again so we can probe the pins turn it back on let's just load that game again I mean we can see it's working but let's just again safely probe the actual voltage and let's see what we have. So, yes, we're in master system mode now. And as you can see there, it's now happily floating at 4.8 volts. Like it should be, just like stock. And if we turn this off and on, I think it may boot. This might be master system mode or game gear mode. Let's just see. But when it does go into the right mode, this will be fully grounded. Yeah, so the menu system is grounded to game gear mode. And then when you go into a master system game, it correctly sets it to five volts by releasing the pin. One last double check. Just want to make sure that Game Gear games still work. Nothing better to test that on than James Pond. And you can see Game Gear games load as well. So I'm happy with that as a fix. And again, this will probably work and must work on original consoles because there would have been a lot more complaints before now that it doesn't work. However, you can see the EverDrive is technically out of spec. For those that want to do this fix yourself, you can see here exactly where to wire. And let's just get a nice close up for you here. So for those of you wanting to do the fix, here is the visual for you to see. So you can nice and easily follow exactly where we ran the wires if you like and do the same mod yourself. And I'll pass this information back to to hopefully get this implemented in his next revision. If you guys have enjoyed me doing these kind of videos and want to learn more about electronics, uh, let me know. I've done a basics on multimeters and some diagnostics, but if you'd like me to go more into depth on creating circuit boards and product designs and things, just let me know. Uh, I love doing stuff like this, and if you guys want to see that, then I'll certainly do more. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.